guests, colleagues, uh, ladies and gents, um, thank you very much. Good, good morning. Um, no pressure at all uh, from that introduction. Um, and certainly uh, the opportunity to represent for VCDF. I note that the Chief of Navy is here who in the succession uh, list is, the, is, the, is actually would perform as the VCDF uh, in that case. And I um, do have very strict instructions from uh, Vice Admiral Griggs to stick to the words that he's got. He has some very strong messages. Um, and the service chiefs, of course, in due course, will get their opportunity uh, to put their views forward. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the, the Ngunnawal people as the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting today uh, and pa um, pay my respects to their elders, both past and, uh, and present. Now, VCF is very pleased uh, to have the opportunity uh, to come today and, and for Aspie to bring this topic to the forefront of our thinking. Um, he is very passionate about this topic and, and certainly he's extremely disappointed that he was uh, called away for high duty at short notice and wasn't able to present uh, himself. Building the joint and integrated ADF is something that in defence we've devoted a lot of time to in the recent years uh, and it, goes, it really goes to the heart of how we must position our ADF for the future. So my aim this morning, uh, on behalf of VCDF, is to provoke some discussion over the next couple of days by proposing that we need to shift gears on a couple of key conceptual and intellectual points on this topic. You'll see that he is advocating some significant nomenclature change. More of the same won't work for us, saddling ourselves to the latest fad that may be relevant to a much larger scaled organisation will not ma match up uh, to our own scalar and resource issues. Now, some of you will be aware that the significant body of work that has been underway of the result of the first principles review, and we've come a long way since the department first pondered and then started to embrace that concept of one defence. That work is ongoing and we're about to enter a new phase uh, of reform, and that is with the stand up of the Joint Capabilities Group next month. This is going to make a real difference to how we manage joint capability going forward and further strengthen the reforms that we've committed to over the past couple of years. Before we look at that, however, I know this development will likely be explored in detail over the next two days. So I want to go back on behalf of VCF, back to how we began uh, the latest reform program. When we kicked off the first principles review, VCDF personally had only one priority and it related to the joint force. As, as the review got underway, his focus was firmly on attaching proper authority to the design, development and the integration of the joint force. When he came into the VCDF role, he joked that the then joint capability authority uh, was a role that featured uh, a big J and a big C, but it really only had a lowercase a. So from his new vantage point, it was evident that he simply could not definitively exercise the necessary authority in relation to the joint force. He really wanted to capitalise that A. VCDF also wanted to think more closely about how we use the term joint. He's said for a few years now that he's not sure joint is continuing to service as usefully as it once did. From VCDF's perspective, Joint doesn't quite cut it today, given the ubiquitous involvement of the civilian component in the department and, of course, other government agencies uh, and their role in just about all that we do. Joint is an inherently military term, and while the notion was a confronting and challenging one a few decades ago, it is now, in VCDS view, a limiting descriptor. From his perspective, in conceiving the joint force, we need to talk about the integrated force. Integrated at an organisational level and integrated technically and culturally. Now, a few weeks ago, VCDF was uh, fortunate enough to be in the Middle East and, and he got to see firsthand what our people are doing in the fight against Daesh. Uh, as part of that visit, he, he certainly referred to how privileged he felt um, to watch how E7 wedge tail aircraft um, and the crew on one of their 14 hour missions. Now of course he wasn't quite thrilled I think with the 14 hour mission um, but a long 
uh, and detailed mission over Iraqi and Syrian airspace. And it was operating in one of the most advanced air battle space management capabilities uh, in the world. So there's no, no, no doubt that this capability typifies integrated capability rather than just a joint one. Given the multitude of feeds it relies on, the different actors that it advises, manages and controls. So our view of integration has often been through the somewhat superficial lens of platform and system connectivity. However, this is no longer good enough. Our people also need to be increasingly sophisticated in the way they assess, interpret and interact across both our currently interpreted and the emerging warfighting domains. A real behavioural shift is required because those domains are blending and we've been forced out of our respective comfort zones. The three tra traditional domains of air, sea and land are what we know best. That's what we've studied, that's what we've trained and operated in and they are where we have traditionally prioritised our capital investment. We have added space and cyber in re recent years which have gained a firm foothold in the domain debate. But when you look at the interdependencies across all five domains, VCDF thinks that the five domain discussion is merely a waypoint. If you follow the integration logic, we are moving inexorably towards a single warfighting domain. Our ability to operate effectively across this one domain will depend on our ability to build an integrated joint force by design. So with this in mind, we need a new intellectual focus on the single domain concept so we understand what it means and what it looks like. First Principles is helping us in this regard. The strengthening of the strategic centre and the establishment of a single end-to-end -end capability development functioning is reshaping how we think and act. The challenge to gaining superiority across the contemporary battle space is effective integration, not just across our own force, but also across government and with all our, all our key ally and partners and in the context of both global and regional security. The challenges we face are becoming even more evident due not just the increased complexity, but also we, because we have that contested and increasingly uh, congested operating environment. At the heart of the first principles review implementation has been the capability lifecycle redesign which is heavily focused on tailoring, streamlining and better integrating our capability solutions. It is equipping us to take that conceptual journey forward towards a single domain. As the VCDF, he is accountable for any successes and setbacks that we might have on that journey. VCDF's role is still evolving. It's shifting from that joint capability authority to the joint force authority. And he is pleased to say and wanted me to emphasise that the A has been well and truly capitalised and been given real decision authorities. The Joint Force Authority has been boosted in two fronts, one being the stand-up of the Force Design Division last year and the other being the transferal of full C4 ISR design authority to VCDF and with the resources to enable it. Supporting these two functions are staff that provide him the means to understand, direct and assure the integration and interoperability of our force design and the delivery of it across the capability life cycle. What it means to have a dedicated force design workforce within VCDF group cannot be overstated. The focus they bring to investment and capability prioritisation decisions underpins the effectiveness of the strategic centre and together with our joint capability management and integration team, they ensure that this is not a static process. Force design has become a business as usual function. It's an almost continuous force structure review focused on, event on identifying potential capability and integration gaps before they arise. In this, they are supported by, by a robust contestability function. And in VCF's view, this is adding real value. Integration, of course, is the force multiplier that allows the relatively small force like the ADF to maintain a higher operational tempo, optimal agility and superior manoeuvrability. 
As programs advance, we're ensuring integration remains front of mind, not just for the current platforms, but across the ADF capability development process. As challenges arise and, and solutions are developed, knowledge is now flowing both forward into the plans executed by the capability managers and back into the force design process. This feedback process is particularly important because it forces us to think about how a program fits into the bigger picture, rather than simply assessing just the task at hand. Now this is a major behavioural shift. As I mentioned earlier, VCF's view is that up until now, we often have viewed integration as largely a technical endeavour. But as I also touched on earlier, true integration is far more than just technical. Those aspects of increasingly complex, congested and contested environments means we have to find better ways of integrating across our force and across the warfighting domain. Technical in integration is certainly important and VCDF is not denying that. And the fifth generation capabilities coming into service will certainly test that. But integration at its core is not about primacy of one aspect, it's about how it all works together. So how we integrate with our people, how we train, how we use the whole of nation capability to produce more efficient, effective and agile outcomes cannot be overlooked. Essentially, what we need is, is to step back and think about what integration for a force of our scale really means. From where we sit now, there can be little doubt that true integration begins with a robust inter intellectual underpinning. So let's go back and, and examine our domains. First, we need to face up to the fact that previously when we spoke of domains, the sea, land and air, it was really about giving us an ability to continue to talk about the services while looking like we weren't. VCF thinks that we're all guilty of it. Our service is, after all, what we know, what we've based our careers on, and is a big part of how we see ourselves. But our scale and complexity, our scale and the complexity of our operating environment means that staying in that particular comfort zone is no longer viable. The emergence of cyber and space has certainly challenged this service-oriented mindset a little, and our doctrine, in our doctrine, we even have the human domain. Left unchecked, we will have domain proliferation. And proliferation will only muddy the waters even more and undermine the utility of the domain construct. Is space at this time and in the Australian context, and please note those very deliberately chosen caveats, is space a domain or is it an enabling function like logistics? critical to the fight for us right now, um, but hardly a warfighting domain. From VCDF's perspective, until we move from being a customer of space and space products, including the bearers that it provides, to possessing serious space capabilities, its status as a domain in the Australian context is contestable. Now, cyber is a different story. We have real, real capabilities and are generating effects from them. We have a clearer and more sophisticated role, uh, sorry, sophisticated view of the role we want to play, how we operate in it, and how we can influence. But multi-domain thinking has its limitations. VCDF would commend a very recent and thoughtful article by Eric uh, Hefty on multi-domain confusion, which you can find on the strategic or the strategy bridge website. VCDF is not an, an adherent to the multi-domain warfare construct. Um, it smacks a little of the fad that he previously mentioned. The bottom line is that as, we, as long as we talk and think in a segmented framework, such as domains, we inevitably think in a sectorial way, one that leads to a focus on the seams rather than the system as a whole. And that is the leap that we need to take. That is why one, def one domain concept is intellectually important if we are to design and build an integrated force. VCF is not saying that we don't need to think about specialist issues, nor is he saying that we should simply have one warfighting service. Our specialist and service building blocks will always be crucial. And he thinks that the post first principles review era has absolutely reinforced the crucial role of the service chiefs. 
This, therefore, is a discussion about our intellectual starting point about um, in designing the force and what con constructs are useful and what are not. We do not have infinite resources and so integration prioritisation in our investment decision making is critical. Our geostrategic realities set, set up an inherent tension between our ultimate role in the physical and self-reliant defence of our homeland and that of our daily operating re reality which sees us working collaborati collaboratively in coalitions that are far from home and that's to ensure that the former is never required. In a small force such as ours, we need appropriate levels of horizontal interoperability across the services, particularly when it comes to, in, to ensuring effective C4 ISR. But we do not need everything to talk to everything else. Of course, the majority of our war fighting and our day-to-day -day operations is conducted within a coalition in a, compon a component-based construct where what VCDF would call vertical interoperability up the component chain is crucial. There is a challenge in getting the investment balance right between the vertical and horizontal demands as we struggle to understand what appropriate means in both axes. This is complex work, but the sophistication of the force we are acquiring uh, demands innovative and deep intellectual engagement, it requires open communication and collaborative behaviours across all stakeholders who are part of our defence fundal, fundamental inputs to capability and that, of course, includes industry. With this in mind, VCDF can see that he has these two other key roles. Firstly, as the Joint Force Authority, as already mentioned, and secondly, as the Chair of the Defence Investment Committee. As the Joint Force Authority, he ensures the analysis of our integrated force needs is centred on assessments of our future operating environment, promoting pragmatic and usable concepts that include both long-term perspectives and more specific challenges we are likely to encounter within the next decade. VCDF's team now has the lead on joint experimentation and force analysis uh, of options to ensure an integrated joint force by design. Obviously, the domain expertise held within the services feed into this, and they remain our key enabler and delivery organisations. We rely deeply on that expertise to provide the intellectual river, rigour and innovation necessary to deliver against our future challenges. But as I emphasised earlier, moving forward, we need that intellectual input to be, to be applied across that one warfighting domain, focused on that single integrated force. This is where designing our C4ISR EW architecture and having authority over that design through integration and interoperability assessments and standard development uh, shows real value. The continuous capability review cycle underpins the interdependencies of the new force design process and the functions. Assessing and prioritising gaps and opportunities is always front of mind with designing our response as force options and deciding with government approval our future force structure. Certainly, there is no perfect plan. No matter the amount of thought that goes into design, it is inevitable that we will need to make trade-offs as the dynamic strategic environment and the budget envelope change. And if uh, Sir, Sir John's uh, presentation this morning uh, does nothing, it should certainly emphasise VCDF's point. As the Joint Force Authority, VCDF is accountable for ensuring that changes are considered and prioritised across the one domain so that one capability is not blindly traded against another. This brings me then to VCF's other key role as the Chair of the Investment Committee. The committee has both accountability and assurance functions that encompass all defence capital investments, including infrastructure, estate, ICT, in addition to force capability acquisitions. Together with his investment, co uh, investment committee colleagues, they coherently, and for the first time perhaps, have a powerful opportunity to look across all as aspects of the capital investment program. And that, I suggest, uh, is probably one of the largest in the country. And they have a deliberate, deliberate conversation to attack these challenging issues through the single warfighting domain lens. The discussions in this committee are becoming deeper, more intellectual, more collegiate and more strategic. The conversation is significantly enhanced 
by the presence and contribution of very senior representatives from the departments of finance and prime minister and cabinet. That presence and participation has also trans transformed the dynamic between central agencies and defence, which has had a materially positive impact on the capital investment approval process in both time taken and providing government a more strategic view of force structure decisions outside of the formal white paper process. But we undoubtedly have, uh, still, have a long, uh, still have a way to go before we can realise all the benefits that true and appropriate integration brings to our force. And that is why confident conferences such as this are so important. And VCF has asked me to express um, deeply his gratitude for the, for the opportunity uh, through ASPE to have he his views presented to you today. Thank you.